Okay, so um, yeah, let's pray and then we'll we'll get started. Father God, we, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you, Lord, for who you are, Lord. Master, we thank you that um, you are holy. We thank you that you're righteous. We thank you that you, you chose to reveal yourself to each one of us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. And we thank you that uh, you continue to do that. Lord, as we draw near to you, Lord, with... Um, with a measure of the hunger and the thirst, Lord, to seek you. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful to, to fill that measure, God, and even more, Master. And Lord, we, we just ask for a revelation of who you are this morning. Lord, your heart, Lord, your ways, your thoughts, Lord, so that your thoughts will be our thoughts and your ways, our ways, and Lord, everything about you, God, your glory, when we see, God, that it'll be life-changing, uh, it'll be so life-transforming uh, for each of us, God. And uh, to that end, Lord, we, we yield ourselves. We say, come, Lord, have your way in us. Open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear you, and Lord, make our hearts tender to receive what you have for us. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, uh, yeah, in uh, financial stewardship, we are in chapter 3. The last class we finished with chapter 2. And we were looking at some of the, um, you know, uh, the, the, we looked at the uh, wrong attitudes. We looked at uh, some of the uh, people in the Bible whom God prospered. We also looked at some of them who, who had a wrong attitude towards money, who wrong uh, uh, perspective towards wealth. And then we looked at their greed and uh, we read about them also. And, and also the fact that God is the one who gives material blessings and financial and miracles. You know, that, um, so we see that this, uh, um, that, that God is a source Right. He's a source of all blessing. He's a source of the supernatural works, which result in, you know, increase, which result in, in blessing, uh, whether it's a family or a community or a group of people. Um, God does so. Right? God does that. The, the supernatural works flow out of him and it results in, in blessing a person. Right. So we, we saw that. And, uh, and also, uh, just to refresh our memories about uh, you know when we say biblical prosperity we're talking about divinely enabled success and growth and prosperity uh, which is through divinely enabled means and uh, for god appointed or deny divinely appointed uh, objectives right so so that is the uh, that is what we saw as the definition of uh, biblical prosperity or the scope of uh, biblical prosperity, right? So today um, we're looking at, we're going to look at, we're looking to the word to see, to be sure of, you know, what is God's will really when it comes to prosperity, when it comes to growth, increase, um, what is God's heart, right? What is God's will? Because if we are sure of that, then we can pursue God in these aspects uh, without any guilt, without any doubt, right? Because if we are in two minds about, okay, uh, I think God is not really wanting me to be successful or wanting me to you know, grow financially or have these material blessings. If we, you know, if we, if we have these doubts in our minds, then one, you know, when these things come into our lives, we feel uncomfortable handling it, right? Uh, let's say, you know, there's a certain sum of money that, that comes into your life, you know, you're not sure. Right? You, you feel a little bad about it. Maybe in the back of your mind, you're not sure, you know, what am I supposed to do with it? Um, you're, you're even thinking, you know, is it God's will for me to have it at all? You know, all these things go through, you know, uh, you know uh, one's mind when when we are not sure 
uh, of God's will uh, for us regarding finances, okay, regarding maybe, you know, wider things like success, material blessings, etc. So the thing is to, to look into God's word and see, you know, uh, and to be sure of these things um, and to look at scripture and to, and to look at God's heart to study and see, you know, what is God's heart about this? about this so that I can be sure of it, I can stand sure, I can stand strong in it and continue strong you know, in it. Right? Even when I'm asking God or even when I'm resisting the works of the enemy, I, I know for sure that it's based on the word of God, that it's based on scripture. So when we base it on scripture, then that gives us faith, right? When God's word quickens scripture, quickens his word to us um, when God's spirit quickens God's word to us then that results in faith right um, but faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God so we are we increase in faith uh, we grow in faith uh, as we continue to hear the word of God as we continue to hear his voice about these matters right so yeah so today let's look at um, chapter 3 which deals with God's guarantee, you know, God's assurance to prosper his people. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at that. How can we be confident? How can I be in a place of confidence to know that, yes, God really uh, wants to prosper his people. God really wants to prosper me as his child, that he, take, he takes delight in prospering me. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, I'll just share the notes and uh, we'll just go at it. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right. The first thing that we're going to see is uh, the nature of God. Okay, now the nature of God, when we study God's nature, uh, what are we, what do we mean by that, right? So um, let me just put this into the chat. And I'll read it out as well. So when we say, you know, nature, we are talking about um, the basic or inherent features or qualities, you know, character qualities of uh, of something or someone. You know, when we say, okay, this is the nature of ice, or this is the nature of of this particular material, or this is the nature of metal. You know that it is. Uh, you, you know you learn so many things, right? It's malleable, it's ductile, and all those things. You know. Um, so, what is the nature? What is the inherent quality, the features of uh, someone? So that is what we say when we say, okay, we're going to talk about the nature of God, right? So the best place, of course, is to go into the Word to talk about the nature of God. Well, testimonies are great. When you say, okay, God did this in my life, and therefore, you know, uh, I understood uh, about the nature of God, how understood about God, uh, well, that's that's great. Uh, but what is unchanging and, uh, you know, uh, unshakable and uh, steadfast is the word of God, which is, uh, uh, you know, the place to go to find out about the nature of God. So let's look at a few uh, scriptures there. Okay, um, if you go right, uh, back up to Genesis 1 and um, I think the verses there are um, you know there's a, sl a slight difference there is if you look at verse 22 for example G Genesis 1 verse 22 now this is right after uh, God creating uh, the sea creatures and uh, you know and the living things in it uh, and also he is verse 20 talks about the birds and everything Verse 20, um, sorry, when we come to verse 22, we see that God blessed them, okay? God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let birds multiply on the earth, okay? And then uh, we, we see verse 24, the earth bringing forth the living creature according to its kind, etc. And then God, uh, verse 28 Again, we see that God blessed. God blessed them uh, after creating man in his own image. He blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, etc. So we see that God blessed 
everything. We we see that over and over again, chapter 2, verse 3 also, that God blessed the seventh day, he sanctified it. So we see God releasing a blessing, God blessing. Um, uh, God is someone whose nature is to bless, right? So God blessed. In, in the book of James, chapter 1, verse uh, 17, talks again about, uh, it gives a description of God. It says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Okay, so everything that's good, everything that's perfect comes from the Father of lights. Okay, so you see that God is blessing, God is giving, and uh, it's, a, uh, it's talking about the gift that comes from the giver, comes from the father of lights, with whom there is no variation of changing or shadow of turning. So it's not like he's generous one day and he's stingy the other day, or he wants me to prosper one day and he wants me to suffer, and he wants me to you know, be in poverty the other day. Um, it's it's that's not God, right? So his nature it, it's very clear. It says that there is no variation or shadow of turning. You know, he is steadfast. He never changes. Um, and we, of course, we read in the Hebrews chapter thirteen and verse eight, which talks about the Son, which talks about the Lord Jesus, that He is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. Right? It's talking about him. It's talking about the eternal word, uh, which does not change. And of course, that verse is there in the context of, you know, don't listen to or don't give yourself to strange and various doctrines, because the you know these things will not profit those uh, you know who who associate with them or occupied with them. So, uh, talking about the unchangeability of uh, God and uh, the immutability of his nature and right? unchangeable. He's the same. And, and praise God for that, right? He's steadfast, he's the same. He's the same. So it says here that, um, you know, Jesus Christ, same yesterday, today, and, and forever. Um, so he's the one who blesses. There is no variation or shadow of changing. Um, if you go to Psalm 84, um, Psalmist talks about how God... Um, 84 and verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he uphold, sorry, will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Okay, so no good thing will he withhold. So uh, it's, it's God's nature to bless. It's God's nature to be a protector, you know, sun and shield. It's God's grace to give. Uh, it's God's nature to not withhold any good thing. Okay, uh, to not withhold any good thing. So that's that's something we uh, we read about his his nature. Right? It is it is inherent to him. It's his inherent quality to bless and not withhold, to give and to give generously, okay? So that's his nature, okay? The other thing that we see is this word shalom, okay? Uh, the word shalom, which, uh, which, we, which we see in Isaiah 9 and verse 6 and, and several other places in the Old Testament, we see that the, the word refers to, uh, you know, it, it, it refers to peace, of course, but it also refers to total well-being. Right. Uh, it refers to prosperity. It refers to um, you know a safety, uh, uh, and it, it refers to there's so many other things, which um, which is about total well-being of a person. Right? Total well-being of a person. So let's let's turn to that uh, scripture. Let's look at Isaiah nine and verse six. Um, okay, Isaiah nine verse six. So. Uh, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Okay, Prince of Peace, or uh, it's talking about Shalom. The word used there is Shalom. So, uh, 
what is being said there is that he is the prince or he is the source of this shalom. He's the ruler of this shalom. Um, and it says that uh, this, these are his names. These are his characteristics. This is what he does, right? And uh, he is uh, the prince of shalom. He is the steward or the head or, uh, or, or the ruler, the captain. Right, one who is uh, one who is dispensing shalom. Shalom comes from him. Right, so um, we see that. And uh, uh, let's look at another verse, Isaiah forty-eight. Okay. Isaiah forty-eight, verses seventeen and eighteen. Thus says the Lord your uh, Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, okay? Who leads you by the way you should go. Verse 18, oh, that you had heeded my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea, okay? So the first thing we see in verse 17 is that, uh, you know, I'm the Lord your God, and this is what he teaches us. He teaches us to uh, bring us to a place of, benefit okay so that's uh, isaiah 48 and verse 17 right so the lord is saying i'm the one who who teaches you who you know who begins to instruct you and to bring you to a place of you know, great benefit or profit and it's you know in the in the english when we look at the word yes it uh, it the word is um, uh, it, it talks about, when you look at the word profit itself, it talks about, you know, what you have after you've paid out all your, you know, covered all the costs, right? If you have all your overheads of, maybe if you're running a business or something, you you have all the overheads, right? You have the, the rent and the, uh, you know, everything else is paid, paid out. And then you have, uh, you know, what is, what is, left behind which is the prophet and uh, yeah let me just uh, just pull out the word there um, uh, in the Hebrew it, it talks about something of value right something that's a benefit again so so we see that uh, God is the one who teaches us to come to that place right um, now all the everything is paid for all the overheads are paid off and you have this prophet and God is the one who is actually um, teaching, right? He's teaching you to profit. He's teaching us to profit. So that's his will. That's his desire. He teaches us to come to that place of uh, profit. Okay. Verse 18 says that, oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Okay. So here is God who's teaching, um, he's teaching his people. And here is God who's commanding. You know, you know what teaching is, right? And what is the difference between teaching and commandment? And this is God is saying, okay, here is my teaching. I'm I'm giving you the know-how, right? I'm giving you the nuts and bolts of how to profit. Okay, so which means that God is not against somebody coming to a place of profit, right? Coming to a place of having a benefit in their lives after paying off everything, like financially, if you look at it, you know, after paying off all the bills, after paying off all the overheads, all the costs are taken care of and you have surplus, right? Now God is teaching someone. He's saying, I, I'm, I'm the God, the Holy One of Israel. I'm the Lord, your God, who teaches you to come to that place, right? So it's wonderful. We see that God wants to teach someone, wants to teach us to come to that place of profit. Now, he leads us. Verse 17 also says he leads us. Now, verse 18 says, oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Okay. So he's commanding something. He's teaching, he's leading, he's commanding. And then he says, if you had heeded, you know, obviously here is a situation where someone did not heed the command. So he's saying, okay, if you had heeded my commandments, then your shalom would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. So we see that, you know, when it comes to a river, it's not like the river, okay, at a, you know, after one hour of flowing, 
it stops. My river continues to flow. You know, a river that is, you know, that is full, it just continues to flow. So, so God is saying, oh, if you had heeded my commandments, that your shalom, your well-being, which uh, and you know everything that involves healing and deliverance and prosperity and peace, your shalom would have been like a river. And your righteousness like the waves of the sea. So we see that um, when God provides the shalom, it's it's coming, it's flowing, it's not ending, and it's it's coming in abundance, right? So we see these scriptures which talk about that. Okay, we, then we move on to the and we move on to the New Testament and uh, and the Book of Romans. Look at Romans chapter chapter 2 and verse 11 says and um, okay, we might say okay God you know is this for someone uh, it is is it for uh, you know a certain people verse 2 and verse 11 says you know there is no partiality with God that's another aspect of his nature that God is not partial God is impartial which means that uh, you know his provision of shalom uh, being the prince of Shalom is is for everyone. Right? There is no partiality with him. So um, it's not like he's you know um, kind of zeroed in on some people for Shalom for this abundance, and the others he does not want. No, it's not like that with God. You know there is no partiality. Right? He's an impartial God. Um, if you look at Acts chapter ten and verse thirty four. Um, Again, Peter says the same thing. Now, this is in, in the light of salvation itself. Right? This is in the light of uh, uh, God pouring out his uh, spirit, uh, people being saved. Now, this is uh, in that context. Right? Peter is in Cornelius' house. He shared the gospel. And, um, uh, and in the sense, he's just about to share you know, uh, the gospel and how they have invited him. And Cornelius talks about you know how how he invited him, how he went about, what happened to him. So then Peter says, Peter opened his mouth and said, "In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality." And then he goes on to say, you know, how uh, people can receive. And he goes on to preach the gospel, and the Holy Spirit is poured out on all who hear the word of God. So in that context, he's saying, you know, God is not partial. And in truth, I perceive that God is not partial at all. So, um, so his inherent nature, his inherent character, quality is that God is not, he's not a partial God. So, so we, we know that, okay, God is a God who blesses. God is a God who's pleased. Um, a God is a God who teaches one to profit. He leads one. He commands. And uh, his commandments, when he did, result in shalom like a river. So he is not one who is partial. It's not for certain, you know, certain uh, uh, chosen few and, and not for the others. But God is not partial, right? Um, let's look at one more scripture, Psalm 145. And... Um, so like this, I'm sure there are, you know, many other scriptures. We're looking at a few uh, here. Like Psalm 145 and uh, yeah, verses 9 and 10. Okay, that's... Psalm 145 verse 9 says, The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. Okay. The Lord is good to all. His tender mercies over all, and his tender mercies over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. In response to you know, his goodness and his mercies, he's good to all. Okay. So that's something that we understand. Now, we might have different pictures of God or when I say different picture of God, we, can, we might have a, you know um, a mental picture of God uh, in our thoughts, in our minds, um, and this can be pretty deeply entrenched. Right? It can be very deeply entrenched in us, and this picture you know is formed because of maybe our experience, you know, good, bad, 
ugly whatever you know our experience through life and uh, you know our relating to god maybe some of the things that uh, some of the regrets disappointments that we experienced in life in relation to god i don't know you know uh, some people who might you know very closely um, very angry with god you know, god i asked you did not give and i'm angry or you know i experienced this in life and uh, um and so i'm so disappointed i'm angry with you god right so we form a picture of who god is he's an angry god he's a disappointing god you know he's a god who uh, and and we with our finiteness right with our limited abilities we come to that conclusion about an infinite god and uh, and we come to a conclusion you know because in all sincerity because of all the things that have happened in life and we say okay god this is who you are lord you are stingy god you do not do this god you disappoint and we we sometimes have this picture a very negative image of god and and that image gets changed or gets clarified to something that is in scripture when we begin to you know see scripture for what it is see god for who he is and renew our mind with scripture right so this is what i thought based on my experience this is what i thought based on you know whatever life threw at me so you know this is who god is maybe this is who god is i've come to that conclusion but then i look into the word and i see god explaining himself i see scripture you know explaining who god is describing who god is and uh, the response to that is that i take that and i renew i renovate my mind i renovate my thinking about who god is you know that is what is renewing our mind right when we renew our mind that results in transformation when you renew our thinking that results in transformation of our life you know our actions get changed because our mind is renewed right so uh, our our life our entire lifestyle everything changes because our mind is renewed right so the way we relate to god now begins to change god says you come draw near so we're just digressing a little bit but uh, just felt that we need to look into that right um well like god says um I mean, we see this um, exhortation in uh, Hebrews 4 and verse 16 let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain grace and mercy and find grace to help in time of need that is Hebrews 4 verse 16 so but then you know we're not able to come boldly because our picture of god is tainted or distorted with various things that may or may not be you know um, the correct thing where it could be distorted because of um you know our wrong understanding or maybe a deficient understanding of who god is so when we look into scripture and when the holy spirit um begins to speak to us and and give us proof and gives us proof and and witnesses to our heart this is who god is then we begin to believe we begin to grow in faith we begin to renew our mind our thinking and that changes the picture that we have about god so we begin to understand oh he's loving who oh, is kind who oh, is gracious right the the cross was you know for me the reason he went to the cross the reason he carried this on the cross is for me the reason he reversed everything is for me right then we begin to change our understanding perspective of god okay so so when we uh, we're looking at you know the nature of god as revealed in scripture so it's important that we begin to receive that as god reveals and uh, begin to renew our mind you know and use that to renew our mind and this renewing our mind is something that we need to do consciously right uh, we need to do intentionally and say lord this is what you your word says i will go by what your word says right what you say about yourself okay so the second thing that we're going to look at is the general promises of god So what are we looking at we are looking at God's assurance you know God's guarantee to prof- to prosper his people right so that we can be sure when we pray so that we can be sure when we stand in faith and we can be sure when we resist the works of the enemy um 
when the enemy comes against us with lies and 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 thoughts of fear and intimidation and uh, you know thoughts of lack and so on so we can be sure that this is what god says this is what the bible says this is who god is right so we're looking at the god's guarantee to prosperous people okay so the second thing that we're seeing is the general promises of god okay now you know there are two words that we looked at i think when we were looking at when we were studying the holy spirit uh, in the holy spirit class right we looked at uh, the word logos right and we looked at the word rema and we and we looked at both right we said okay uh, logos refers to the uh, the word general word of god the principles of god the precepts of god the word of god as given in the scriptures applicable to for all you know, to logos then we looked at rema we saw that rema specific instruction um word that is quickened by the holy spirit the holy spirit quickening or you know focusing highlighting the logos for us uh, at a given instant so we can you know follow uh we can um uh we can obey um and uh, and in fact god wants us to do that so we saw logos and rema so when we look at um, the general promises of god okay when you look at the logos the general promises of god we see that god um god wanting to bless god wanting to prosper god wanting to lift a person bring increase into a person's life okay we're looking at the logos itself like right? and uh, specifically of course when we when we look at the rema god can speak god can use this god does use this um to highlight to us you know in our points of need to highlight to us and to show us that he is who he said he is right that he will take care um okay so let's look at a few scriptures some 84 verse 11 we've we've seen already okay some some one and was is 1 to 3 um okay it talks about a man who trusts in god um who okay let's let's read right some 1 was is 1 to 3 blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor sits in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law he meditates day and night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper so it talks it talks about the blessedness of the man the condition of blessedness of the man who does certain things who does not do certain things okay who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly who does not stand in the path of sinners meaning you know he does not walk he does not have a life um, that is that is uh, uh, that identifies with the life of a sinner in a way that in a, either in his choices or in his actions right uh, he does not see, sit in the seat of the scornful or he is not like the ones who are scornful or are scorning making fun of um, others maybe maybe making fun of god and his word and so on but his delight great pleasure delight is in the law of the lord and in his law he meditates day and night so so here's the man who is who is walking not you know who's not doing certain things but he's doing this what is he doing he is delighting in the law of the lord the word of god the laws of god are his delight it gives him great pleasure it gives her great pleasure and he meditates day and night which means that he's making this part of his thinking he's thinking over and over again he's talking about it he's engaging uh with the laws of god he's engaging with the word of god it's so part of his uh, her life and then verse 3 talks about he shall be like a tree and this tree which is planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper okay so um so this is the outcome right this is talking about the blessedness of man now i just want us to focus on 
you know, verse two, which talks about the one who is actually delighting, you know, this per person, sorry, who's delighting in the law of the Lord. He's meditating on the word of God, is part of his thinking. So you see the outcome that is intended by God for someone who is who who's delighting in God and who's delighting in his ways, whose whose thoughts, whose meditations are on the word of God. Okay. So which means that uh, God is again, you know, is someone who takes delight in bringing this outcome to someone who is engaging with God in this manner. Right. So, so at not no point can we conclude and say it's it's God's will to to keep you down, to keep you in that place of lack, right? To keep you uh, suffering in that manner. Now there are you know there could be other things. You know I might make a choice, I might make a decision by myself saying that I want to live such a life. Or I want to live a life that is, you know, a very simple kind of life. I don't want to, you know, deal with these things. So I might consciously make. Now that's a different thing altogether, right? Uh, I want to live this, that, that kind of a life. Now that's a different thing. I make a choice, saying I don't want. I don't want anything. I this I'm satisfied and. And this is how I want to live my life. Now you're making, and God will honor that choice, right? But then you see that the way God wants to, and uh, and God, God and you know, the outcome of someone who is making a choice not to be in a certain way, not to make uh, or to live life, uh, in an, not to live an ungodly life, but choosing to completely immerse oneself you know in god in the words of god in the ways of god and and meditating and we know you know when we meditate on the word of god uh, again your mind is renewed your faith is renewed you're built up in the inner man and all that happens you know when you meditate on the word of god so so you see that this is the outcome of the word of god in a person's life Okay, so which is you know, growth, flourishing, thriving, and uh, I mean, there's so many things that you can you know get out of that verse three. You know, like a tree planted, bringing forth its fruit, not withering, and it very clearly says, "Whatever he does shall prosper." Right. So th th this is word. This is God's word. So we take it and you renew it, and saying, "God, this is this is who you are. This is what you." your promises are what your promises are this is what your logos is for someone who uh, you know walks by your principles right okay so let's when we look at psalm 23 um, very familiar it again talks about uh, restoration it talks about rest it talks about um, you, you know um, uh, green pastures and so on um, and it, it talks about goodness and mercy, right? Following the person, uh, and as the person dwells in the house of the shepherd, in the house of the Lord forever, right? So, verse one talks about the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. Okay, that word means I shall not lack anything, right? Lack anything, you know. Well, it's not just spiritual matters, but everything. Right? I shall not lack. Because he is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Um, what does he do? I, I will not lack because he makes me lie down in green pastures and still waters. He restores my soul, you know, my emotions, things that could be battered, things that could be distorted. Um, he leads me in paths of righteousness now he is leading me in parts of righteousness when when he is leading as a good shepherd when i'm following and this is the, these are the path this is the path of righteousness i don't lack anything right the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack because he's leading me and he's making me 
you know, lie down, rest, refreshing, he's restoring. And, um, you know, he says, even though I walk, verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because his presence is there, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Right, even the the uh, the rod, even the rod of correction, you know, that comforts me because He is with me. And it says it's an open display of God's goodness. He prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil; my cup runs over. You know, I'm just overflowing. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now that's the that's a declaration, you know, that's a, that's a declaration of faith that the psalmist, uh, Psalm, you know, King David is making, saying, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Now, the thing is this, you know, when we look at the shepherd, the Lord Jesus himself, you know, he referred to himself as the shepherd. And we see in John chapter 10 and, and, uh, and verse 10. So where the Lord says very clearly what the shepherd does he talks about what the hireling does. He also talks about what the enemy does, right? Uh, John chapter 10 and verse 10, he talks about the thief, talks about the enemy. So he says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And he's referring to himself and he's saying, I have come that they may have life. And what kind of life? He's saying, that they may have it more abundantly. Okay. So this abundant life is what he came to give, he came to bring to you and to me. Right? This abundant life. It's a life which is totally opposite of what the thief would come and do. The thief would come to steal, the thief would come to kill and destroy. So you see, it's the opposite of that. It's not, it doesn't talk about stealing, taking away from what we already have or destroying what we already have. But it talks about addition and talks about multiplication and talks about increase. It says the thief does this. He's very clearly dif differentiating. This is what the thief does. Okay? This is what the thief, thief comes. He, he, he is, the thief's mission is very clear. It comes to steal. It comes to kill. It comes to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And it goes on to say, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Okay, so this is God's heart. This is his intention. You know, the, the one who gives, is willing to give, or he gave his life for the sheep, for us. Um, he also says that he will not withhold any good thing. Right? He also says that, uh, you know, that there will be no lack. And the testimony of the one who has made him as the shepherd, the testimony is that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Okay. So we see here that again, in the in the promises of God, we see that, in his very identity, you know, the Lord Jesus is saying, I am, this is who I am. I am the good shepherd and I have come so that you might be, so that you might have. Right? You see those, I have come so that you might have and life and life in its fullness. Okay. Um, look at Psalm 112 verses 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandment. Now, there are certain conditions. There are certain, you know, uh, certain things that are, that is expected, right? So, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house and his, and his righteousness endures forever. Now, you know, it's talking about wealth and riches and it's, it's, you know, the Bible is so comfortable talking about that, right? Whereas we, we sometimes are not comfortable because we have seen the, 
maybe, you know, in our minds, we're just thinking about the negative aspect of it, the negative aspect of wealth. You know, we've seen the greed, we've seen the abuse, we've seen the way it's been, you know, it's been coveted and the way it's been used and abused. And, and then we, we come to a place of saying, oh, we almost fearing, right? How, can I handle it well? Well, the thing is, blessed is the man. And this is what will follow. So the important thing is for us to renew our mind to you know God's word and say, God, this is this is who you are. This is what will be the outcome of someone who's trusting, someone who's blessing. You will make this, you will bring this into my life. But Lord, my heart will be for you. My heart will be for the shepherd, right? My heart will be for who he is so that what he gives will not, control, you know, my heart for the Lord, right? Now, that's the great place to be. Now, that's the right place to be. Rather than saying, you know, I, I will not, you know, have anything to do with it. Well, that's that's one end. The other, the other end is, I want more of it. I want more of it. And, you know, to be greedy and covetous about the, what, the one who's the shepherd wants to bring into our lives, right? So the, the right thing is to say, okay, Lord, I, I want to be a channel. I want to be a conduit where I can be an instrument and I can just flow, you know, like the way you flow in through me like a river and we're, we're bringing in and being an example, being, an, a, being a blessing to others. In this also, may I be uh, an instrument, right? may I be a, a conduit where you just flow through me and right? I can you know, be a blessing to the world in this as well. Okay, so we'll stop here, uh, and you can you know go through the rest of the couple of scriptures, also Proverbs and Malachi, and and uh, and uh, the important thing is you know for us when we look at the nature of God, you know next class we look at the covenant blessings and also the blessings of Abraham, um, but the important thing is this that we renew our mind, that you renew our thinking. You know, that's the other uh, side of other aspect of learning. You know this course that we renew our thinking, renew our mind, and say okay, God. This is who you are, and and come to a place spiritually where money does not have a hold on us, right? Uh, where we are not swayed by it this way or the other, where we are not, you know, if we don't have much, where we are not, you know, unduly anxious or worried about it because we know that it'll come. He is he is the source. He is the provider, right? And if ultimately, you know, we we, uh, you know, when we see it and we come, in, so we are not controlled by it, right? And we handle it the best way possible uh, or the right way in which God wants us to handle it, right? Okay, so we'll stop here. God bless. We'll meet again next week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor.